Hi, everyone. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Everybody can hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, well, we're just gonna, we're just gonna wait here because um, there are more people that are coming into the class. So we're gonna wait for everybody. Okay, so we have a lot of people that are still joining. Um, by the way, how many people are in this course? Like in the last in the last level, how many people were there? Well, uh, about fourteen. How many? About fourteen. Fourteen people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay, so right now I have, um, yeah, about 12 people in the class, including myself. So maybe I think uh, there might be uh, maybe two more that are coming in. Okay, all right. Well, everybody, welcome to today's class. How's everybody today? Doing pretty good. Thanks, Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine, just kind you. Pretty good, thank you. Okay, so wow. Okay, so okay. Okay, so we have many people here. Hello to everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi, Good Jonathan. Hello, how are you? Hi, Richard. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Hi, how are you? Fine, fine, fine. Thanks, thank you. Okay, yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, well, um, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm so happy that uh, the majority of you were able to connect. Um, and uh, well, let me introduce myself. Uh, well, I, I already introduced a little bit of myself in the group, uh, but let me tell you a little bit about who I am because you don't really know me. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about who I am. Um, so my name is uh, Jessica Guerrero. And um, well, I have been an English teacher for, um, 15 years and uh, I have, well, I, I, I live in San Salvador. I have been living in El Salvador for 17 years, almost, almost, yeah, 17 years, like 16 something. And um, well, I have a son and he's 12 years old. And um, what else can I can tell you? Well, some of my hobbies, um, I love to, I love to go to the beach. I don't go to the beach very often, but I do love it. Um, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, but mostly what I can do because of time is I love to watch series on Netflix. Um, I love uh, listening to music and dancing. Dancing is my passion. I absolutely love that. And um, what else I can tell you? Um, my favorite color is purple. My favorite dessert is chocolate. Uh, I love Coca-Cola. <laughs> um, I'm trying to cut down on Coca-Cola, but I do love it. Um, so yeah, that's about me. 
do you guys have any questions that you want to ask? Mm, no. Everything is clear. <laughs> any any doubts that you have? Any any curiosities that you would like to ask? Me? No, really? Nobody wants to ask any questions. Come on, don't be shy. Ask anything you want. Okay, teacher, where are you from? Oh. Uh, but specifically in El Salvador? Because you said you were living in San Salvador since six years old. Yes, I'm actually originally from Canada. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> How many years did you live in Canada? Um, since I was two years old until I was 20. When? From the age of two until I was 20. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys have any other questions? How many languages you have been teacher? Sorry, I, could you repeat the question? I didn't hear very well. How many years do you have to be teacher? a teacher? Oh, how many years have I been teaching? Is that the question? Yeah. This, this oh, okay, yeah. Um, well, I have been teaching uh, for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Do you have yeah. a lot of experience to teach in English or another language? No? Spanish? No. Uh, other language? No, just English. I've only been teaching English. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. okay. I, I know a little bit of French, but I've never taught French. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next time. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, tell me. It's a it, it's a different uh, the Canadian accent uh, from um, in in comparison with the USA. Um, there might be a small difference. But it's not a very big difference, it, honestly. Um, not a big difference at all. Uh, it's actually, um, I mean, there might be, a, mostly, for example, like Americans will, um, they will do a lot of cutting out of the, of the syllables and, and, um, and like endings, like they will just smash things together. So like it's a little bit more relaxed. The language like American English is a little more relaxed. Um, whereas Canadian English is more like, um, you know, we like to say- More formal. Yeah, a little bit more formal. We like to say uh, the syllables a little more. For example, the word like, uh, for example, the word O-F-T-E-N, um, Americans say it often, often. Um, so they drop the, the, the T and they make it silent. Uh -huh. But um, uh, Canadians, we go more for the British accent, or better so not the accent, but the, the British pronunciation of the word, which is often. So we pronounce the T. Oh. Yeah, so things like ah, okay. that, um, you know, but it's not very, you know, big difference. Um, mostly there are differences in the writing. Okay, so in the writing, you might actually see um, the difference because Canadian writing is more like British writing. Um, so we use like, for example, ah, okay. we like, for example, in color, we spell C-O-L-O-U-R, not C-O-L-O-R. 
So um, when I came to El Salvador and I was teaching uh, English and, you know, in, in El Salvador, it's mostly American English. So I've had to kind of learn uh, to change it and, and write words like color without a U or favorite or neighbor, all of those words uh, without the U. But, you know, other than that, it's really not the big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But, but for example, uh, the American people say uh, a lot of uh, Ghana and Guana. Uh, Canadian use uh, normally this, this word? Yeah, yeah, we use them too. We use it too. Um, yeah, both of them are, are, are used, you know. Um, uh, we, we can go a little more formal, rain, say want to, but we also use one. Yeah, it's possible. It's just that, that the, uh, the American English is a little bit more relaxed. Like they use it more than Canadians would. But that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, do you guys have any other questions you want to ask? Don't be shy, ask anything you want. You said you said uh, you have a son. Yeah. How old is how old is your son? My son is 12, 12 years old right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a jump. Yeah, yeah, he's he's still young, but he's gone very big. He's very very big. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the difference uh, was young and teenager. Uh, for the age, no, or for the started to. Years start with 13 years and um, ending to 19. Sorry, I'm not sure what, what is your question. Could you repeat that question again? Uh, okay, Ricardo uh, asked you um, ask a question, mm -hmm. and your son is 12 years old, and he said he's a uh, young, yeah. Uh, I can uh, say uh, he's a teenager, no? Um, well, actually, he's a preteen. He's a preteen. So he's not yet a teenager. Usually teenagers we consider from 10, sorry, from 13 years on. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Uh, even 19 is, is more like an adult, even 18 too. Depends on where you are from. Um, but um, 12 years old is more like a preteen. That's what we call them, preteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions that you guys have? Really, no okay, other questions. Okay. Uh... Mm -hmm. I can ask you a personal question, for example, why you live here in El Salvador if you can live in Canada? I think Canada is huh. a better country. Um, well, uh, if it's a better country, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, really de excuse me, it really depends on your, on your perception, on what you like and everything. I mean, um, for many things, Yes, Canada has a, a better quality of life. That's for sure. We can't um, deny that. But um, there are other things. I mean, everywhere you go, like no matter what country you're talking about, there's always going to be advantages and disadvantages, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, I came, actually, I came to El Salvador on a vacation. It was supposed to be just a few months I was supposed to only going to be, I was going to be here only for a few more months and that's it, like maybe four or five, six months. And then I was going to return. But I found out in those months that I was here that I liked it, that I, I liked being with the family, um, you know, because, yeah. you know, Salvadoran families are nice and big, <laughs> right? So um, I really liked that. I loved having my, my grandparents and my and um, my uncles and aunts and nephews and nieces and 
cousins. And that was something very new for me because uh, in Canada, I never grew up with any family except for my parents. I'm an only child. So um, I only grew up with mom and dad and that was it. That was my whole family. So being here with the whole family was very nice. And um, about the actual country itself, I really, really like the weather. The weather, oh, I, I love the weather here in El Salvador. Yeah. Except for the months of like... Yeah, there is a problem with Canada. Yeah. So the weather in Canada is very, very bad. Yeah, uh, well, the, where I'm from, um, I'm from Vancouver, Canada. It's actually, mm -hmm. uh, unlike what many people think, it's not very cold. I mean, it's, you know, it's colder than here in El Salvador, but it's not very cold. But what the problem with Vancouver, Canada is that it rains a lot. Like it rains, it rains. But it, and it, Vancouver has the best weather in Canada. True. Yes, definitely. It's, uh, it's good weather, but it's very cloudy and rainy. Like half of the year is cloudy and rainy and the other half is their sun. So we don't see the sun very much. There might be even weeks where we don't see any sun at all. So I really liked it here in El Salvador, like having the sun. I really, really love the sun. I love the beaches, like I said before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I love going under the sun and the beaches, laying there. I just love it. So I, I really, really enjoyed that. Also, I think the people in El Salvador are really nice. You know, they're very warm. Um, and that's also something else I like. So those are the reasons yeah, because, why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in Canada, the, uh, there is a country where there are a lot of people that the different place. It's a multicultural place. Right. Yes, definitely. It's it's very multicultural. Uh, Canada is very, very multicultural. And what I like about Canada, um, you know, I don't I don't mean to 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 put any any country down, but but I sometimes uh, what happens, for example, other multicultural um, countries, for example, the United States. Uh, is sometimes people go there and they are not accepted and they say, no, no, you have to be like us, right? When you come to our country, you be like us. And Canada is not so much like that. Canada is more mm -hmm. like accepting everybody. It's like, okay, you have your culture, great. Share it with us. We want to learn about your culture. So that's something really nice about Canada that... Um, a, there is a, a lot of acceptance. I mean, there are people that will not accept, I mean, in any country, you know, so there are people that are racist or things like that. But in general, I would say that Canada is very accepting of all cultures and races and languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you guys have any other questions you want to ask me? No? No more questions. No questions? Excuse me. I start very late. Pardon me? I start very late and I want to know what is your name, please. Oh, my name is Jessica. Jessica Guerrero. Jessica, nice to meet you. My name is Cesar Omar Moran. Okay, nice to meet you, uh, Cesar Omar. Nice to meet you. Yeah, okay, well, I'm happy to see that the majority have connected. I have like uh, 19 students, it's wonderful. I really, really like that. Um, and yeah, the, the, the best, like, I mean, of course you guys know that this course is, um, you know, 40 hours and 24 of those hours are used on the platform and 16 of those hours are virtual classes. Um, so the most part of the course is actually with the platform. But if you guys can connect to the, uh, the virtual class, the online class, um, it would be better because when you are connected to this class, uh, we can help you if you're having problems with some, something of the platform, we can help you. Uh, if you are like, if you, well, I'm going to be explaining certain topics, 
that you may need more explanation or you may also need more practice. So we're gonna be also doing that, okay? So we're in the class, we're also gonna be doing practice uh, for different, um, different uh, structures that we're gonna see in the class, okay? So do you guys have any questions for me at this moment about the, about the course? Okay. All right, just on curiosity, are there any, is there anybody here that is new to uh, Inglés Corporativo that has never been, that this is their first class? Anybody? This is my, um, this is my first time. Okay, uh, who, sorry, I didn't catch that. Who was that? Who said that it was the first time? This is my first time. Yes, yes. Okay. I see about three of you approximately are new. Okay. All right, no problem. Excellent. Well, thank you guys uh, for um, for sharing that information. It's very valuable because uh, for those of you that are new to the course, um, well, just let me tell you a little bit about how this course works. Pretty much uh, this course is 40 hours, like I was mentioning. And the majority of the course, we, uh, we use it to work on the platform. The idea with the platform is for you to complete the sections. There are, um, there are gonna be five sections, okay? And uh, you're going to be completing in the first two weeks, we should be completing the first three sections, okay? So in the platform, you everybody has access to the platform, right? You've already seen your your um, uh, the email that that they were that was sent to you. Uh, everybody should have been able to access. Actually, if you if you are in this in this class, most likely you've seen the the, the email, right? Because that's where you have the access to the um, uh, to the um, class. Um, so. In that same email that you got, we have two things. Well, two important things I want to tell, talk to you guys about. First is the access to the platform. So when you go to the platform, you will be able to have the access. Uh, there are five sections, and we're going to be looking at the first three sections in uh, the first two weeks. Okay. Then after that, there's a midterm. Okay. So on the platform, there is a midterm. Uh, you do the midterm on your own. Uh, and then we have, uh, for week number three and four, we have sections four and five that we're gonna be finishing and the final exam, okay? So all of that is done online uh, in, the, in the platform. And you have the opportunity to practice as many times as you want. You can do the exercises over and over and over again until you get it correct. It doesn't deduct any points. And the idea is to get a minimum of 80% on the platform. So you should be doing the exercises um, until you get 80%. That's the idea, that's the goal, to get a minimum of 80% on the platform. Now, um, and the classes, the online classes, what the idea is, is in, in these classes are one, to ask questions about um, you know, exercises of the platform that you didn't understand that I can help you with. Two, to be able to get the explanation to certain exercises um, so that you don't have any problems in the future with the platform. And three, to be able to practice the exercises with other classmates, having the, the, the speech part of, of the practice, right? That's the idea of these online classes, all right? Um, and uh, in this email, also in the same email that you received, you should also have received a link to the WhatsApp group. Uh, so in case you are not in the WhatsApp group, you can join the WhatsApp group from that link. You can either go through the WhatsApp web if you're doing it from a computer or directly from the phone, you just press it and it should go directly to the WhatsApp, okay? The idea with the group is also to be able to help you and, and give you the support 
and to give you important information that you need during the class. Okay. Any questions about the course? Anything you want to ask about? Anything at all? Uh, sorry, oh. I don't wish. I don't be sure if you already mentioned that uh, the class will be uh, recorded and, and and we can see the next day the uh, the class. Yes, if, thank you. Uh, I can take. Yeah, thank you for reminding me about that. Yes, exactly. Uh, that's right. In case you cannot see, you cannot. In case you cannot enter the class. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, you were working, you were sick, there was no internet connection, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever reason, you are not able to be in the class. Or if you just simply want to review the class because you didn't understand something and you want to see the explanation again, you have the option of seeing that, uh, that, that, um, that class online in the YouTube channel that we have, where well, you can see down our playlist. Uh, it's all the playlist is also uh, listed in the email that you receive, so that you can go directly to the playlist and you can watch the videos again. Now, um, the videos will be uploaded between the time of the, that we finish class and the next day at 8 a.m. So in other words, this video, this um, this class right now, it's being recorded. If you guys notice at the top there, it says that it's recording. And so that means that everything that we do in this class, you're gonna um, is gonna be recorded. And then when when I upload it to the playlist, you will be able to see it as many times as you want, whenever you want. Okay. Any any other questions that you have about that, or about anything else? Don't be afraid of asking, you know, I'm here to help you guys as much as possible. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, in that case, well, wow, um, I'm really happy to see there is, this is a big group here. Um, I'm having 20 students, that's great. That's really, really good, I'm happy to hear that. Okay, so um, the first thing we're gonna do for uh, to begin with, um, I just want to quickly get um, just a, you know, a very quick introduction. Um, tell me a little bit uh, your name and you know, why you need, why are you studying English? What's the reason for studying English? Just that, okay? So um, we'll start, uh, I'm just gonna start in the order I have you guys here, um, which is actually alphabetical order. So we'll start with um, Claudia, okay? Uh, Claudia, are you there? Yes, teacher, I am here. Okay, wonderful. Can you tell me just a little bit about why you are learning English? Because I want to apply for a scholarship in other country, maybe. And because um, always I want to learn English. I know that is very difficult, but it's possible. If you want, it's possible. And that is the reason. Okay, thank you, Claudia. I agree. You're absolutely right. Anything is possible if you really want it and you work towards it. I totally agree on that. Yes, very good. Okay. All right, thank you, Claudia. All right, um, I also have a Delia Perasso. Is she there? Delia? Are you there? Can you open your microphone? Oh, there she um, is. <laughs> okay, Hi, teacher. Hi. <laughs> My name is Delia. Um, and I would like uh, to 
to to earn English because it's for me difficult for the time, for the family, for the work. Is the it's difficult for me <laughs> speaking English, pero no impossible. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Just like when I, I finished telling Claudia, I agree. Nothing is impossible as long as you really want it. So good for you. Excellent, Delia. Okay, thank you. And, um, <laughs> nice to meet you, teacher. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Eduardo. Is Eduardo there? Can you tell us a little bit about why you are learning English? Yes, teacher, I am staying here. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Why are you learning English? Teacher, I am very honest in, in this moment, I don't practice English, English because I have to do my own other homework about my, my career. Okay, I understand. But why are you learning English? What's the reason? Because I like it to, to learn another language and it's possible help me in the future. Wow, ah, okay, very good, excellent. And what, why do you think you might need it in the future? What, what can you use it for? Mm, it's possible dry is the travel another country, sorry travel another country and to move the, the city oh. is <laughs> my is my dream excellent very good all right thank you thank you Eduardo. okay what about gerardo how can you tell us a little bit about yourself gerardo uh, hello hi uh, good night teacher and classmate uh, in my case i learned in english because hygiene is very important uh, for example if you can uh, enter to a new job um for example if you you travel to another country to uh, speak with another person with your families um on that okay that sounds great excellent all right thank you very much Gerardo. and i have irania hi teacher good night um in this time the vacations um not have the practice the english but i like this language it's difficult for me but uh, i like it's possible for me okay good so you're doing it more like a hobby just because you like it um I like um, see videos of watch the videos of English mm -hmm. is my hobby when when <laughs> uh, then my work in my house uh, but make the cookies and I like cook food. Okay, very good. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Adani, for sharing that with us. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, I also have uh, Jonathan. Jonathan Hamilton? Yeah. Um, hi. Uh, good evening, uh, teacher and classmate. My name is Hamilton, and I'm 35 years old. And I would like to improve my English to get a new job, new job, new job. And I would like to travel another country with my family. And okay, all right, excellent, very good. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate that, Jonathan. Okay, uh, Juan, Juan Ho, I also have. Are you there?
Juanjo, are you there? Maybe, maybe he's having trouble. Okay, okay, maybe later then. Um, all right, let's go to Carla. Hi, Carla. Is Carla there? Excuse me, teacher. Good night. Hi. Um, my reason to learn English, I need conversation with other people in other country when I am vacation. Oh, okay. So uh, you travel. You travel a lot? Um, yes. Okay, excellent. Very good, very good. Okay, well, thank you very much, Carla, for sharing that with us. Okay. okay, great. All right, and Lennon? Hi, teacher. Hi. Uh, what's the question? The same? Why I learned English? Sorry? It's the same question for me. Why I learned English? Lisa, I was wondering why you're learning English. Okay. I learned English because uh, I want to have a conversation with American people, specifically with missionaries that come to South Africa. Sometimes I meet with them, but I understand, but I cannot answer when they ask something. So I want to learn English for have, to have a good conversation with them. Okay, so this is from your job? Why? What? From your Sorry? job, you say? Um, my job, I am a pastor. So I have some, uh, I, sometimes I meet with American people because I go in a mission or oh, they're coming. So I want to have a nice conversation with them because okay. I understand that sometimes I can answer. Okay, I understand. All right, well, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Okay, okay. and Lisette? Hello, teacher. Hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, I think nowadays it's very important to learn English because if you can speak other language, you can get other opportunity in your job and in general in your life. So mm -hmm. You can explore other opportunities in other countries and when you can travel, you can share with other, with different people. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for sharing that with us. Um, thank you, Lisa. Okay, and Luis? Hello, hello, teacher. Hello, everybody. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi, okay. perfect. Okay, uh, so, uh, I would uh, I would like to enhance my English level. Uh, looking for a better job, uh, I work in IT department, and I am seeking for a, a better job. But all the uh, the companies is asking for native English or or professional English, uh, and I have have experience writing emails or chatting English but uh, no in speaking uh, as the uh, uh, classmate uh, uh, the pastor say i can uh, i can speak english a little 
but to understand when somebody uh, told tell me uh, something in English uh, it's hard to me to understand because my mind is uh, is thinking in Spanish yet okay yeah absolutely that's something that's 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 one of the biggest challenges uh, for for students um, to uh, stop thinking in their native language and start thinking in the language that they're learning. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah, um, but you will like the more practice you have, the better you will get at it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. Yes. Um, and Marcella, I have Marcella there as well. How are you? Fine, thank you. What about you? Good, thank you. So tell us, Marcella, how, why are you studying English? Okay, uh, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, when I entered to the class, yeah. you were speaking and I felt so, so scared because you speak very well and I, and I thought uh, my English level is lower than, than her. So I felt so, so scared. And then uh, you, you said you are the, the teacher, so I, feel, I felt better. <laughs> well, and answer the question, why, I am, why am I learning English? Well, let me tell you. First of all, it's a personal goal since approximately um, 16 years ago and in another reason and in the most important I need to to get a better job uh, because I need to increase my my money I need to make money a lot because I have a daughter and she's studying at university and I have three dogs and they are so so expensive because they eat a lot more than me and my daughter Oops. and I have a, a house I live alone with my daughter so I have a lot of a lot of uh, responsibilities in my shoulders right. so, <laughs> and I want to talk with um, a native uh, English person or uh, United States person and I need to understand understand the English movies without subtitles or or change to the idiom to Spanish. So for that reason, there, there are more bad, <laughs> only that for the moment. Yeah, well, don't worry, it's okay. Um, but um, well, first of all, let me tell you that uh, don't worry. Um, yes, I, 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 I totally understand that you might have uh, felt a little bit um, intimidate or anything but actually uh yeah no don't don't worry about it um everybody here is learning even i'm learning i'll tell you that much even i'm learning even though english is my native language but i'm still learning i still i continue learning and so ne you never really stop learning a language i'm sure that in, even in spanish you guys have probably learned many words that you didn't know like when you read in the newspaper for example you say, oh, what's this word, right? And, you know, it's, just, it's natural. Every, we're all learned. We continue learning. So never, never think that, um, that you, there's nothing else to learn. There's always so much to learn. And also, um, yeah, don't feel intimidated, right? Like, uh, you know, everybody learns at different pace and everything. Um, and uh, I don't know if you, were, if you were here when I mentioned this, Marcela, but um, like I said, I am a native speaker of English. So um, obviously I'm going to speak a little bit faster than maybe you're used to. So at the beginning, you might have a little bit of, of um, problems understanding me. It always happens. I always have students saying, teacher, I did, for the first three days, I didn't understand anything. <laughs> you know, and, and then you get used to it. Your your ear starts getting used to the accent and, and then it picks it up. So uh don't worry, Marcella, just you know, keep at it. And yeah, that's a very good, it's a very good goal, right? To continue um it, trying to to speak more, right? Native speakers 
and just everybody in general. Good, excellent, thank you. Okay, Michelle, can we hear you? Hello. Hi. Well, I'm starting English because I want to understand when other people talk in English to me. And I want to, to talk with more fluency. And I think uh, the English is very important and essential. Uh, because we can get um, more opportunities. And nowadays, um, it's essential to, to, to know another language. Okay, yeah, I agree. Very good, excellent. Very good, thank you very much, uh, Michelle. Okay, and I have Cesar Omar, are you there? Is Caesar there? Caesar on what? Good evening, everybody. Hi. My name is Caesar Omar. I, I, I have a, a, a pro, I have a problem with a uh, when, uh, with uh, the language because I it's more difficult for me to speak, but uh, is easy uh, write in and read uh, every document books, but I have uh, to practice and learn more. Good, excellent. All right, very good. And why do you need English, Omar? Excuse me? Why do you need English? What's your reason? I don't understand because it's, uh, I, 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 I don't hear very good. Uh, why do you need to learn English? What's your goal? Uh, I, um, I hope uh, to uh, learn more because I I need to a new job. Uh, is the uh, this is the, the reason because okay. uh, is, I hope to a new job. All right. Okay. Great. Excellent. Thank you, Mar. Okay. And uh, I have a uh, Rebe. Yes, teacher. Hi. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm learning English because uh, I I want to improve my English level. I started to to study English in 2017. So in the beginning, I think I thought uh, I really hate that language. I don't want to learn. <laughs> but uh, with the time, I realized that it's very, very important to know another language for forget uh, others opportunities for because this opened to you a lot of doors. I had the opportunity to speak with some American people and it's a really good experience because they are, they are very, very patient with you. <laughs> when you don't know how to, to pronounce some words and, okay. and say something. It's really good and I would like to have a very good position in a job with this course. Or I don't know. I have very, very big dreams. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Big dreams are important. Yeah, you always have to put reach high uh, to be able to or put your, your the bar very high so that you can reach. Yeah, good. Excellent. Thank you, Rebe. And Ricardo? Hi, teacher. Hi. Uh, I study English because I think that English is important for a job and to travel another country. 
uh, the English is important for life. Okay, okay, very good, excellent. All right, thank you, Richard. Okay, and I also have Ricardo Figueroa. <laughs> Hi, teacher. Hi. I, I said, which Ricardo? Yes, I noticed that both of you opened your microphone. <laughs> okay. It's okay, go ahead. Uh -huh. Tell us. Okay. Um, I learned English because it's uh, very important to my job. And I would like to travel in Europe. Europe. Uh, yeah, in Europe. But uh, if you enjoy more, is must speak English because it's, necess it's necessary uh, with communicate with other people. Mm -hmm. um, I I think the the speak English is uh, difficult for me, but uh, I like it. Okay. Okay. And and I think sometimes I speak it very very good. Good, excellent, excellent, very good. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Oh, Saul, you know? do we have Saul? Is he there? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. And I need I need to learn English. Uh, this um, I work uh, I work a uh, uh, tourist guide, and okay in occasions i work uh, with people of north american and and for the reason i need to learn english and but i i can difficult uh, uh, with my english mm -hmm. okay all right it's good so for your job as well okay well thank you very much and last but not least, we have Sonia. Sonia. Good night, teacher. Hi. I learn English because I want to get a better job and I would like to travel to other countries where the people speak in English. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Excellent, thank you. All right, guys, well, thank you very much for sharing a little bit of, of that with me. Um, the reason why I was asking this question is because it's important for me to know why you are learning English so I can help you better. Um, and as the majority, like in general, I've, what I've heard is that people are learning English to get a better job, to get a better position in their job, right? In their current job and for traveling. <clears throat> so that's uh, pretty much the three reasons that, that I have been able to see in general, uh, which is very good, excellent. Yes, some of you already mentioned that it's a challenge and you know it's difficult for, but you know, the more you expose yourself to the language, the easier it will get. It will get. So one of the things I can uh, suggest you guys do is try to keep in contact with the language as much as possible. I know that you guys are probably limited with time. That's one of the reasons why you're taking this course because um, maybe you don't have very much time to be, uh, you know, going to a certain place, or you know, and obviously that you know this is this is a very good idea because uh, you get to work on your own on the platform. And yeah, I, I understand all that. But if it's possible, try to get you expose yourself to the language in other ways. For example, if you are traveling, um, you travel by you you're traveling to work. To give you an example, I don't know some of you probably are working at home, but let's say that you are traveling to work. If you travel to work, you have to go by car, or you're going to go by bus, okay, um, or maybe you walk, okay. I don't know if you work very close here. To your workplace so if you live close to your workplace maybe you walk well in that time that you are traveling or what, what we call in english commuting so it's a commute it's going to to school or, or work right that 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 trip that you do why don't you use it for practicing english how can you do that 
listen to songs, listen to songs and try to uh, figure out the meaning of the songs or listen to podcasts, right? Um, different podcasts that can all help. Even, even listening to maybe like on YouTube, um, something and, you know, while you are, you know, you can put your earphones and uh, cell phone and, and that will help you a lot. Okay. So those are just some tips that you can use um, to be able to practice your English every day. Okay. Uh, by the way, guys, um, today, well, we have a few more minutes uh, left of class. So in these few minutes, I'm going to actually get to, um, I'm going to um, get to explain a little bit about the first topic or one of the first topics, better said, that we're going to be exploring in the platform. So right now I'm going to be sharing uh, my, um, my, what's it called? My PowerPoint. Tell me when you can see it, please. Let me know when it's possible for you to see it. Can you see it now? Please let me know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah, sure. okay, perfect. Um, since you can see it, um, let me just first of all, um, in the platform, we're going to be seeing we're gonna just, one of the first things that we're gonna be looking at our structures is called the passive. The passive is the opposite of um it's the opposite of the active voice. In the active voice, we know who does the action and the focus, the emphasis is on the person that's doing the action, okay? Whereas in the passive, the, the focus or the, um, the emphasis changes. The emphasis is no longer on the person that does it. Why? Because there are a few reasons why we use the passive. The first reason is when the doer is unknown. In other words, when we don't know who did the action. And I have an example here. The building was constructed in 1951. Who constructed the building? We have no idea. So the, no, the doer, or the, the doer is the person that does the action. We don't know who that is. Second reason is when the action is more important than the doer. So we really don't care about who did it. We care about the action. Example, my computer was fixed. Who fixed my computer? It really doesn't matter. It could have been Juan or Juana or Carlos or Carla. It doesn't really matter. What I care about is the action of my computer being fixed. That's what's important to me. That now my computer is working fine. So that's that's what's most important. The second, the third reason is when you want to avoid blame. In other words, we don't want to say who did the action because we don't want the person to have uh, a responsibility for it. Example, the window was broken. Who broke the window? We don't wanna say, it. maybe it was, it was you who did it, maybe it was your best friend. We don't want to say who did it because then you would be given a, a responsibility to someone and, and making them be guilty for it. The fourth reason is when the doer is obvious. Okay, so we don't have to mention who did it because it's obvious. Example, Maria was arrested today. Who arrested Maria? Well, we really don't know. Sorry, sorry, we know, sorry. This one we know because the only people who can arrest Maria are the police. No one else can arrest Maria. A teacher can't arrest Maria. A doctor can't arrest Maria. It can only be the, the police. Okay, so that's the reason, okay? Uh, those are the most obvious reasons uh, for using the passive. Uh, now, what is the structure of the passive? The structure of the passive is the following. We use the subject, then we use the verb to be. In this case, we're gonna be using the was or were, and then the past participle plus a complement if necessary. But this part right here is the most important part. We use the was or were and the past person, okay? 
That's the structure. So examples of this would be, Tommy broke the window. Okay, Tommy broke the window. So the verb here is broke. What we're gonna do here is we have the subject. In this case, the subject is going to become, is the, the, the object of the active voice. This is the active voice, this is the passive voice. So in the, in the active voice, the window is the object. Now the window becomes the subject right here, the window, because we're emphasizing the window, not Tommy. We don't care about Tommy right now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the verb to be. So in this case, we use was and past participle broken. The same thing here, we have a, fall, a falling tree damaged the house last night. Here we are emphasizing the fallen tree. That's the active voice, but we don't wanna say that, we don't wanna emphasize it. So what we do instead is we change it. And this, which is the active, sorry, the, the object of the active voice becomes now the subject when we put it here. So we're gonna say the house, the house. That's going to be the act, the object is going to become the subject now. And then we use the word was, okay, it's from the verb to be. And then past participle of damage is damage. We continue by a fallen tree last night. Here, this part here, by a fallen tree, that tells us who did the action, okay? We always introduce the person or the thing that does the action using the word by, okay? So guys, um, this is just a quick explanation of this topic. We're gonna to be working on this more tomorrow, but I just wanted to introduce this so that if you would like, you can start working on that tonight, okay? Uh, on the platform, we can start working on those exercises. So you can go back and look at the video and see what um, the explanation was in the PowerPoint, okay? Any questions, guys? Oh, sure. No? Oh, clear. Okay, all right, guys. So I will see you guys tomorrow and we will continue practicing that tomorrow, okay? So it's been great seeing you guys and meeting you and uh, I hope everything goes well and we'll see each other tomorrow then, okay? Okay. All right. Take care, guys. See you. Okay. See you. Okay. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.